VHD5 is a constant power point source system designed for large audiences, long throw and intended to be flown at a minimum height of 10 meters. Each left and right hang usually consists of two VHD 8.10 mid base enclosures above, one VHD 5.0 mid high module in the center and then a further VHD 8.10 mid base enclosure underneath. The VHD 5.1 downfall would then be added at the very bottom of the hang if required. The system does not require complicated setup or pre-show analysis via prediction software and the pan and tilt aspects of the VHD5 flybar system mean that any fine tuning or environmental adjustments can be made to the coverage area once the system is flown. This is a first and unique feature of the KV2 Audio VHD5 system. To begin flying the system, remove the transport covers, locate the flybar transit case and wheel it into position directly below the two chain hoists at one side. The distance between these two points should be one meter. Lower the chains and attach them to both left and right shackles on the top flybar section. Raise this up slightly and rotate the flybar transit case through 90 degrees or by one quarter turn. Position the large metal spigot directly above the black center fin, lower the top section and line up the holes. Then insert the locking pin all the way through both sides of the spigot. Raise the assembled flybar to roughly 1.5 meters, ready to introduce the first loudspeaker cabinets. The VHD 8.10s are transported in pairs on a custom-built heavy-duty cart. Wheel over the first two VHD 8.10s and position them directly underneath the main flybar assembly. Remove the quick lock pins from the flybar and the top of the higher VHD 8.10. Rotate the silver knob, which will raise up the rigging arm to reach into the flybar double fin-shaped front section. Lock them into the vertical position by replacing the quick lock pins into hole number two. The holes on the rigging arm must be aligned with the rear holes on the flybar fin. Adjust the height of the flybar assembly if needed. Then insert the quick lock pins into the flybar locking points. Note, it is essential that the cabinets are correctly lined up Otherwise, it can be difficult to line up and insert the rigging arms. At this point, the long black chain can be released for utilization at the end of the flying process. It's time to take care of the cabling system. So position yourself around the rear of the cabinets and connect the wiring loom with the multi-pin cable in the flybar transit case. Then attach the cable strain relief to the top VHD 8.10 using the fly clip section at the base of the cabinet. Take the looped flybar motor cables and sit them neatly around the extruded circular bar next to the tension chain bag. Then take the female XLR connector and connect it into the tilt bar located on one side towards the rear of the flybar assembly. The male XLR will only fit into the pan rotate section located on the top bar. Now take any two of the blue LK connectors and connect one into each of the VHD 8.10s. We are now ready to release the transport car, which is done by pulling out the quick lock pins on both sides at the base of the lower VHD 8.10. You'll notice the rigging arms drop through below the cart floor. Once released, replace the quick lock pins back into the locking point hole number one at the base of the VHD 8.10s. Raise up the flybar using your chain hoist by roughly a further 1.3 meters in order to make room for the next module and wheel away the empty VHD 8.10 cart. Now it's time for the next module, the VHD 5.0 mid-high enclosure. Wheel it in and position it directly underneath the hang. Lower the two VHD 8.10s so that they rest completely on top of the VHD 5.0 cabinet with their feet interlocked. Remove the quick lock pins, then rotate the silver knob on both sides of the VHD 5.0, which will allow the rigging arms to raise up into the bottom of the VHD 8.10. Once in position, replace the quick lock pins to the respective locking points numbers one and two. Don't forget that this always has to be done on both sides. Go around to the rear of the cabinet to connect one of the blue LK connectors into the blue LK socket on the VHD 5.0 enclosure, as well as the yellow LK connector into the yellow socket. Once both are connected, you can pull out the very bottom quick lock pins of the VHD 5.0 
which will release the transport cart in the same way as we previously saw on the VHD 8.10. Replace the quick lock pins in the cabinet. Raise the fly bar by a further 1.5 meters. Wheel out the empty cart and wheel in the final VHD 8.10 transport cart. This will be a pair of VHD 8.10s transported together, but only the top one will be utilized on this side of the stage. Attach the top cabinet in the same way as previously shown. Don't forget to insert the quick lock pins into the locking points one and two. Please remember this always has to be done on both sides. At this point, you should find the position on the chain that corresponds to your configuration and attach that point to the back of the third VHD 8.10. If the system is being used without a downfill, this VHD 8.10 will be the final cabinet in the hang. Plug the final blue LK connector into the blue socket of the third VHD 8.10. Remove the quick lock pins to unlock the rigging arm of the very bottom VHD 8.10. Move this rigging arm by turning the silver knob to the transport position and lock it by inserting the quick lock pin into the transport locking point. Replace the push pin in the third VHD 8.10. Don't forget to do it on both sides. By raising the fly bar slightly, you will be able to wheel out the remaining single VHD 8.10 for utilization on the other side of the stage later in the process. If you are using a VHD 5.1 downfill enclosure, then raise the fly bar by a further one meter before wheeling the downfill into place. The VHD 5.1 downfill does not have a silver knob to raise the rigging arm. Instead, there is a vertically sliding rail which you can manually slide up and down from the recess within the sides of the cabinet. Lower the hang so that the front feet of that VHD 8.10 cabinet sit directly within the foot recess points on the top front of the VHD 5.1 downfill box. At this point, you should be able to remove the locking pins and slide up the rigging arms from the VHD 5.1 downfill into the VHD 8.10 low mid enclosure. Once fully up, then replace the lowest quick lock pin into hole number one on the VHD 8.10. Raise up the fly bar by half a meter and wheel out the cart. Find a position on the chain that corresponds to the configuration as the downfill box pivots, one person should pull the downfill cabinet back and upwards in an arc motion, whilst another person connects the chain, securing it in place with the attached fly clip. Once secured, the final connector, which is a black LK type, can be inserted into the rear of the VHD 5.1 downfill. At this point, you can raise the complete hang and move on to wiring the amplification rack. Connect the amplifier side of the multi-cable from the flybar transport case with the big LK multi-pin connector, locking it into the breakout socket on the VHD5 signal and power distribution unit. Then connect the power. Once connected to the control and amplification system, you will have the option to rotate the flybar left and right, as well as tilt it up and down. This unique design ensures that as long as the system is carefully placed and aimed correctly, the sound will be extremely even and linear within the entire listening area, out to beyond 100 meters. The ability to move and focus this sound delivery is a revolutionary concept, whereby even once the system has been flown, it can still be individually tailored to a changing situation with different audience sizes and areas. Unlike multi-arrayable systems, as a point source solution, VHD5 does not require complex software to recalculate new cabinet angles or several hours of manual reconfiguration by a team of system engineers. This means that crucially, noise problems or environmental changes can be dealt with in a matter of minutes and at the touch of a button. This really is the future of large-scale sound made perfectly clear. The demonstration in this video relates to one side of the system and you will simply repeat this for the other side. Whilst this video will guide you through advice and tips on flying a VHD5 system, it is expressly the sole responsibility of the user to ensure that at all times any KV2 audio product or system is suspended and rigged using best practice and in accordance with current international and local regulations. Steel safety cables should also be attached to the flybar safety points.